Market Center Inc. had accounting income of 156,000 in 2020. Included in the calculation of that amount is the CEO's life insurance expense of $5,000, which is not deductible for tax purposes. In, in addition, the undepreciated capital cost for tax purposes is $14,000 lower than the net carrying amount of the plant property and equipment, although amounts, the amounts were equal at the beginning of the year. Prepare point set as journal entry to record 2020 taxes, assuming IFRS and a tax rate of 25%. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do is reconcile accounting income to our taxable income because we need taxable income to calculate our current tax expense. So let's go here. So accounting income, oops, okay, so it's not going good. Okay, starting over. Point Senate Inc. had accounting income of 156,000 in 2020. Included in the calculation of that amount is the CEO's life insurance expense at $5,000, which is not deductible for tax purposes. In addition, the undepreciated capital cost for tax purposes is $14,000 lower than the net carrying amount of the property, plant, and equipment. Although the amounts were equal at the beginning of the year, prepare point set as journal entry to record 2020 taxes, assuming IFRS and a tax rate of 25%. So the first thing that we need to do is reconcile accounting income and taxable income. So let's start with that. So we're gonna start with accounting income. And it says that we had 156,000 of accounting income. So then what are the adjustments for taxable income? Well, it tells us that included in the calculation is the CEO's life insurance expense of 5,000, which is not deductible for taxes. So we need to add that back. So we're gonna have life insurance. We're gonna add back 5,000, meaning that we're actually, this would have already been expensed in our accounting income of 156,000. We would have had revenues of some amount and expenses of some amount. And included in those expenses would have been this life insurance expense. So we're adding it back. So for taxable income, it's like we didn't deduct it from uh, taxable income. And there's no problem with expensing it from accounting income. It's perfectly fine under I for us to expense it. It's just not allowed to be deducted from taxable income. And then it says, the next difference is undepreciated capital cost is $14,000 lower. So that means that in here we've got, we've deducted depreciation, but we can deduct an extra, um, an extra amount of CCA, which is greater than depreciation. So we can deduct an extra 14,000 for tax purposes. And I think those are all the differences that we were given. So this is the sum of this is gonna equal our taxable income. So this is going to be 147,000, just the sum of everything above. And then our tax rate, we're told is 25%. So if we apply the tax rate, now we are going to get current tax expense. And this is going to be $36,750. Now, this amount here was, so this is a permanent difference because this amount's never going to be deductible for tax. So this is a permanent difference, whereas this is a timing difference or a temporary difference because eventually CCA and depreciation will catch up. We can only deduct for tax or for accounting the total amount of the asset. So eventually those amounts will even out. So what does that mean for our deferred tax calculation? Well, we've got our only difference, our only timing difference. So we only want to look at timing differences here. So we ignore permanent differences. We're going to ignore 
permanent differences, okay? So we have one timing difference that we need to consider from a deferred tax expective perspective. And normally we would say our carrying value, our tax base, then we're gonna have our temporary difference. We're gonna have our tax rate. And then we're gonna have our deferred tax. These are our regular columns that we were setting up as we went through the lecture. However, in this situation, we have not been told what the carrying value is. All that we know is that the tax base is $14,000 lower than the carrying value. So the temporary difference then of whatever the carrying value is going to be 14,000, it has to be 14,000. Our tax rate is 25%. So our deferred tax is gonna be 3,500. Now, is this amount a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability? Well, we've already, we're deducting more for tax than for accounting. So what that means is that eventually accounting is gonna catch up with tax. So we're gonna have less that we can deduct for tax in the future, meaning that we're gonna have a higher tax expense. So that means that this is a deferred tax liability, more taxes in the future because we're deducting the CCA faster, less deductions in the future. Okay, so now, we, now we've been asked to prepare our journal entries. So our, tax ex, our current tax expense is gonna be simply debit current tax expense. And our current tax expense was 36,750. And this was simply our taxable income times the tax rate and credit income tax payable for the same amount. And then our deferred tax. So we know it's a deferred tax liability. So we're gonna have liabilities are gonna be an expense. So deferred tax expense. And this is a PL account or an income statement account. It's going to be this 3,500 that we calculated and credit deferred tax liability. So we're actually setting up that liability on our statement of financial position. And you might remember from the end of the lecture that IFRS requires all deferred tax accounts to be presented as non current. So that would be a non current. Uh, statement of financial position liability. And those are our journal entries. Hope that makes sense. Let's take a look at part two. So part two says prepare point set as journal entry to record 2020 taxes, assuming ASPE and the taxes payable method. Ooh, do you remember what the taxes payable method is? Well, the taxes payable method is an accounting election that's, a, that's permitted under ASPE, where you simply ignore deferred taxes and you record current taxes only. And the current, it doesn't change at all. We're still recording this exact amount as our current tax expense. So if we had, if we had recorded, if we were under reporting under ASPE, and we, we decided that we would record things according to the taxes payable method, we would simply record this one entry and that's it. We would ignore the other entry. That's as simple as the taxes payable method is. And that takes us through part two.